Coming! What could that be? Let's go see. Thank you! Oh my gosh! Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. You are seeing a live feed. I just got delivered a brand new Apollo miner and that's compliments of Jingo Mining. So big thumbs up. Thank you so much, Jingo Mining. And I'm gonna be reviewing this miner. I've been waiting to get this miner, but they shipped it out so fast. I can't wait to go upstairs and unbox it. So don't go anywhere and let's go take a look. Okay, so I pulled the miner and the power supply out of this box and that's what comes inside of here. So I don't need that anymore. Let me just start with the power supply. They send a power supply and it's a simple adapter. It has two six pins on it and it has a power core that'll be specific for your region. And this is what we're really looking for. This is the iPolo V1 Mini Classic Plus Wi-Fi Miner. So this miner it seems epic based on the specs, but before we get into that, let's open it up and take a look at it. Comes with this little booklet. Kind of packed really snug too. Ta-da! So this is the iPolo V1 Mini Classic Wi-Fi Plus. It was sent to me by Jingle Mining for me to review it, and I plan to review it and give you my objective thoughts and opinions on it. This little miner is supposed to be extremely powerful and efficient, doing 280 mega hash at only 270 watts. To give you an idea of that, it would take me about five graphic cards, and if you can't envision that, let me show you. This is my 5 GPU rig. It has five RTX 3060 Ti's, the most efficient cards in my opinion. And this to all together, this whole rig can mine 300 mega hash, but this little miner can do 280 mega hash. 280 mega hash, 300 mega hash. Big difference, but the biggest difference lies too in the efficiency. This little miner supposedly can do it at 270 watts. This mining rig will, even though it's probably one of the most efficient rigs there are, it's gonna probably still be about 650 to 700 watts. So you become a partner with the electricity company when you're using a mining rig like this. But there's a lot of advantages for other GPUs mining, and I'm gonna be covering that in a separate video and in a comparison. This little unit seems like it has epic performance, epic efficiency, and it's epic size and price too. Assembling this unit is super simple. It comes with a power supply, and it comes with two six pins. All you have to do is put the six pins, one in there, and the other one in. And now the power supply is set, and you'll have a cord specific for your region that you'll be plugging in. If it's 240 volt or 120 volt, I'm going to be using 120. The only other component to add would be the Wi-Fi antenna. So you can put your Wi-Fi antenna in, and the unit is completely assembled now. Now, if you had an Ethernet cord, an RJ45, you could plug that right in here too. So if you want to run on a hard line, you can do that as well. So with that all said, let me do that and let's plug it in and let's get this miner started. And you'll hear the fans are probably rev up right off the bat. So those are pretty much the fans running at high speed as it's starting to calibrate. Jingle Mining was kind enough to provide me this miner for review today. So if we want to jump over to the jinglemining.com website, you'll see specs for this miner as well as some of the other products they carry. They're a global distributor of Jazz Miner, iPolo Miner, and Annex Miner products. They're also well known in the industry too and have very strong after-sales support resources. They have everything from firmware upgrades, online tutorials, as well as they'll even help you with their own support if you have any issues with the miner. The miner that they've sent me is the iPolo V1 Classic Plus ETC. It mines Ethereum Classic 280 mega hash using only 270 watts. It has 3.6 gigabytes of memory, which I'll come back to shortly. And it's a Wi-Fi unit, so it's great. You can just plug it right into RJ45, so you have your ethernet, or you can use it on Wi-Fi. It's your choice. But it's amazing because this unit is only $999 right now. I see currently they're showing as sold out on Jingle Mining, and that's probably because of the recent surge in Ethereum Classic. 
Ethereum Classic is up quite a bit. Uh, it's actually almost 3 x in the past month alone. If I look back at July 14th, Ethereum Classic was at 14.72. Now it's up at 40.93, so it's almost 3 x And at times, if I zoom in a little bit, I could see it even peaked out at over like 44, even momentarily, yeah, 44 to 45 range. So, wow, the coin is really pumped up a lot. And that probably explains why a lot of people jumped on this deal to buy this miner because it's basically a little money printing machine. You turn it on and you get it mining and you're mining a 280 mega hash using only 270 watts. And for people who are especially in areas where you pay very high electricity rates, you could still be very competitive, I believe, with a miner like this. The only limiting factor that I see with this miner, though, is it only has 3.6 gigabytes of memory. And why is that important? Well, the memory of the miner is very important because it determines how big of a DAG it can carry. Well, what is a DAG? A DAG is a directed acrylic graph, and it's used in mining for the calculations to determine, you know, valid shares, etc. as it's mining. And as mining time goes on, it needs a bigger DAG. That's why Ethereum mining cards that used to be only four gigabytes could no longer mine Ethereum anymore. They weren't big enough to do it. And the same holds true for Ethereum Classic. So this miner with this size memory can only mine Ethereum Classic up till about May of 2024. So that's definitely a big limitation of it. But overall, it's still an incredible miner. And especially at that price value, it's very, very attractive. Now, I personally think the other miner that they carry, the iPolo V1 Mini, the 300 at only 240 watts, it's actually more powerful and more efficient. Although it definitely has a significantly higher price tag, it may be a better value for a lot of people too because this one has higher memory and it can mine Ethereum, even though it's going away, but it can mine Ethereum Classic up till about December of 2031. So wow, there's a big difference between May of 2024 and December of 2031. I see a much further time horizon on a miner like this. If you're interested in learning more about this iPolo Gold Miner, that's actually more powerful than the Classic. And it can mine Ethereum Classic up till 2031. Check out the JingleMining.com website, or even better yet, check out my video. I did a full review of this miner, and I'll be honest, I'm absolutely loving it. Ba -da 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 -da. So I have this little miner running for the past couple of days, and it's running fantastic for me. It's not generating much heat out of it, although I do feel the power supply gets pretty toasty, kind of warm. I may want to look into changing it to be something a little bit cooler running. You know, running even on the Wi-Fi, this unit is just running flawlessly so far. No problems whatsoever. The only thing I am noticing though too is I hear the fans kind of raise up a little bit and slow down. They raise up a little bit and slow down which is a little bit annoying, but overall the unit, it's on right now and it's pretty quiet. Let me put a sound meter on it and let's see what it's reading. So I'm about a foot away and I see it's about 56, it's 57, even getting into sometimes into like the low to mid 60s. So it's not very noisy of a unit, as you can hear it's running right now. And power wise, it's actually running at about 284, 285 watts which is a little bit higher than the specification said 270, but it also said plus or minus 10%, so it's within that threshold. But I also noticed this mine is running great. It's not running at a 280 mega hash for me. I'm seeing consistent numbers in the mid to high 290s, so maybe that accounts for a little bit of that electricity. Let's go take a look at some of the other miner screens and see how they're looking. To get a real idea of how well this miner runs, let's jump over to my mining pool because that determines my profitability and mining revenue overall. So I've been mining with the Flex Pool to mine Ethereum Classic for the past few days, and this miner is running fantastic. No problems, no hiccups at all. I am seeing I'm getting 293.6 mega hash, which is actually a little bit over what the, I guess the spec is about 280. So my miner is actually overperforming a little bit. Even though it only says there's 260 mega hashes reported, that's probably just from, I guess, the firmware or the BIOS on it. But the miner's running great. And I have a very high number of accepted shares and a very low number of stale and well as no invalid shares. And according to Flexpool, it says this miner is currently making $7.01 a day. And that's before electricity costs are factored into it. 
And I'm really happy with just how well this miner is performing. No problems, no issues with it whatsoever. Now, how do you control a miner like this? Well, that's another part that's great about these miners, and it's very simple. Once the Ipolo miners are connected and set up on your internet, it's very easy because they publish themselves as a local web page within your own home, I guess, or office internet. So within that environment, I can come into here and I can just put username as root, password uh, is root for it. And I come into the Ipolo, this is their web dashboard. And it gives me running information of the miner. What is the hash rate, the number of valid shares or rejected the temperatures as well as the fan settings here. And this is really a view only page. You can just get an idea of how well the miner is running. And it's telling me here right now I'm getting 299 mega hash, so that's great. Now when I click on information overview, I see a summary of the different mining pools and connections that are actually active at the time, as well as ones that are inactive or dead. So I'm currently connected to Ethereum Classic US East Flex Pool, as I just showed you, that's where I was mining from. And it lets me set up and specify some backup servers. So in case my primary mining pool goes down, I could easily have a backup pool or a backup pool maybe with a different port that can just be redirecting to. And it shows me what's alive. And if I scroll over to the right, it gives me the number of accepted, rejected, and stale shares over time. And you can easily set this up in the miner configuration page. And you see select coin. The only option here is Ethereum Classic because that's the only coin that this one can mine. The other one, the gold miner I showed you earlier, that can mine Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, but we know Ethereum's going away. And this is where you would just specify these are my mining pools, and this is the different wallets. So if you had different pools and different wallets, you could just specify them all here. And other than that, that's it, you're done. There's no overclock settings to play with. You can't control what is the core clock setting, your memory clock offset, what is your power limits. It's kind of a very easy set it and forget it. This job of these miners is to get up and get running and they'll tune themselves and get to that highest hash rate for you. So there's no fumbling around with using the right overclocks too. They just run great, usually right out of the box. You will have to though configure your Wi-Fi. So you may have to plug in a RJ45 for your ethernet. If not, you'll just set up the Wi-Fi. Other than that, there's really nothing else to do. Occasionally, in case there's some firmware upgrade that may improve the stability or add even some new features to the miner, you may have to do a firmware upgrade, and that option will be down here. Other than that, there's just there's really nothing to do. It's just watch it mine and collect the money, and that's the beautiful part about it. Just a little money printing machine. I'm loving it. Ba -da 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 -da. If I want to get an idea of mining profitability and revenue projections, estimates, based on the current market conditions, I could use tools like what to mine. Please keep in mind though too that we know Ethereum is supposed to be turning proof of stake really, really soon. So there's going to be a lot of hash rate changing between different coins and there's going to be a lot of uncertainty going forward. It may have a positive effect. It may have a negative effect. I don't know. I just want you to be aware of that. And I'm just sharing, you know, my findings with you. This is nothing I'm sharing with you is financial advice. Please do your own research. I've come into what to mine and I've entered in a hash rate of 280 mega hash and I've used this 270 watts of power and my cost of electricity is about 12 cents kilowatt hour. And I put in the unit cost of $999. And with that, let me just do a fresh calculation. And I see it is telling me that my unit should break even would time would be about 181.49 days. So just over about six months, which is really great for any mining hardware, but this may not be the best time to be mining hardware with all the uncertainty too. And if I want to look though too at some of the profitability, the estimated rewards, I can get an idea of how much of the Ethereum Classic I'd be mining. My overall profitability would be daily about $5.50. So that's right, this little miner after my electricity cost is going to be $5.50 based on the current market right now. What I'm very attracted to is the cost of electricity. It's only going to be costing me about 78 cents a day, which is much better than any of my GPU mining by far. In the past, with any of my GPU mining, especially when mining is tight, I noticed the electricity company, you know, it's a very, very slim margin of profit sometimes. But when you have these little ASICs that are so highly efficient like this, it's a huge game changer in your profitability and your options to be able to mine effectively. Even when coin values may go down, you still be maybe far marginally higher than if you were mining it with GPUs, just in my experience. Again, do your own research on this. And it's given some speculative values too, like weekly this mining would make 
$38.53 after electricity, as well as $165.13 a month. So I guess, you know, add that all together, and that's how you have your 181 days, which is about six months. So I just wanted to share this with you and just hopefully give you some insight into what I'm seeing on sites like What to Mine. I'll put a link down below in case you want to come and plug these numbers in and maybe adjust it to with your electricity cost too to see if this may be a, a smart idea for you or something you want to consider. A common site people often refer to for ASIC and mini ASIC minor information, including pricing, is ASIC minor value. It gives some summary information on the profitability, the income, electricity, and profit estimates or projections on it. And I love too that you can scroll to the very bottom and you can customize it, set the local preferences for your own currency as well as your electricity costs specific to you. So if you're dealing with an area where you're higher than the default value, just customize it to yourself and this should automatically adapt to it. Beneath the minor information, it gives the specifications, all the different specs we were looking at before. And it's usually pretty accurate. You can see this is a relatively young miner. It was only released in June of 2022. So wow, this miner is only about two months old. It's kind of hot off the press, which is great. And a lot of people look to it too as a competitive guide because beneath that, there's a list of different resellers. And here we see even Jingle Mining, who provided me the miner for this review today. They're listed here and shown as a trusted vendor. And one thing I consistently see about Jingle Mining is, is that for this miner, as well as the other miners that they carry, including the Jazz Miner series and Annex Miner, they are the lowest price consistently. Sometimes I see other vendors may advertise a certain price, but when you actually click onto their website, it turns out it's significantly higher than is shown to you. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to do your research on that before making any investments. So that about wraps it up for today. This miner performed flawlessly for me and I ran it for a few days to really just want to hammer it and just test it out. I didn't have any problems with it whatsoever. It maintained its temperature, it maintained the hash rate. The only issues I found though was the fluctuation on the fan speed, which I'm gonna look into a little bit more, to see if I can configure it a little bit better. I think this is an epic miner for the money. 280 mega hash using only 270 watts for under a thousand bucks. So wow, what an amazing deal the Jingle Mining team has put together with this one. The only downside with this one, and it's definitely a limiting factor, is the memory. See, the memory on this miner will only let me mine Ethereum Classic up till about May of 2024. So that's not very far away, although um, I think I feel pretty confident I'll be able to ROI and a lot more before then. I would love to mine way beyond that. And that's actually one of the advantages of the other miner that I more recently covered from them. That's the iPolo, the V1 Mini, that's the gold miner, because that can actually mine Ethereum Classic up till the year 2031. So it has a higher price tag, but I guess you get what you pay for. But all in all, I give this miner just a thumbs up and I just wanna say thank you very much for watching my video and a big thanks to Jingle Mining for sending it to me. If you haven't already subscribed, please press down on that subscribe button. I put a lot of hard work and effort into my videos and you subscribing and showing your support, it really means a lot to me. So don't forget, press down on that subscribe. Till next time, see you in the next video. Happy mining.